From the Spano Center in Stockton, welcome to Pacific Tiger Women's Basketball. Hello, everyone, and a gracious good afternoon to you. I'm Gary Ellen Bolt. It is good to have you with us from the UOP campus on this Sunday afternoon, the finale of the Tiger Turkey tip-off. This is not a championship game of a tournament. There's a difference between a tournament and a classic. This is a classic, meaning you play one team one day, you play one team another day, the other team plays the other team, there's no championship hardware or anything like that. Standing in the way of the Tigers on this Sunday, the final game of November of 2022-23, the Aggies of UC Davis. Davis ran into a Wyoming squad with a fair to midland amount to prove on Saturday and fell 67 to 48. And here's how Jennifer Gross will line up the troops against Pacific today. Tess Sussman, 5'10 grad student out of Needham, Massachusetts. She's a uh, transfer from Harvard, and she'll wear number one for the Aggies this afternoon. Also starting Sydney Burns, 5'9 sophomore, Wilsonville, Oregon. Yvonne Turner, 5'8 junior out of Fontana, California. Megan Norris, 6'3 freshman, Menlo Park, California, her home. And Mazatlan Harris, one of the better names in Division I. Mazatlan Harris, 6'2 sophomore from San Diego. She is the fifth starter for the Aggies in their sixth game, two and three on the season. And their last effort, a loss to Wyoming, 67 to 48 here in Stockton at the Spano Center on Saturday. Starting five, as you can see, Katie Deaton is getting the start again. Still a little banged up, bruised and ill. The Tigers of the University of the Pacific, they'll be without Anaya James be without Josephine Biard and Diamond Richardson. However, CeCe Holmberg, who will not start, but she is dressed and uh, ready to go sometime in the course of the afternoon. Katie Deaton, Daylight Katie, 5'11", junior out of Wausau, Wisconsin. Five points, four rebounds a game. Also with the start, Elizabeth Elliott, 9.7 rebounds a game, six months sophomore. She's from Inglewood, California. Liz Smith, go, go. What a day against Wyoming on Friday. Six for six from the three-point line. 5'9", junior, Dallas, Texas, IMG Academy, 15 points a game, four rebounds. Slinging Sam is Sam Ashby. Nine points a game, seven rebounds. 5'9", senior from Perth, Australia. And getting the spot start today, Madeline Ennis, 5'11", junior, out of Burlingame, California. Seventh game of the season for the Tigers. They are four and two of the year. 2-2 two two at home, 2-0 two on the road. Have not played at a neutral site this year, nor will they, until they get to the uh, West Coast Conference Tournament in Las Vegas at the end of February, beginning of March. Their last outing, a win over Wyoming. 67-53 here at the Spano Center. Elliott to jump center along with Norris. Taff is controlled by Cal Davis. Hope you enjoy the game of the broadcast right here on the WCC Network. Burns to the top of the wheel. With it, thinking about it, is not Harris, was Yvonne Turner, then Harris. Rolling around the right side of the wheel. This is Sussman going my left to my right. Davis in the first half. Ball is knocked loose. Ball is still loose on the floor. Annis in a scrum with a couple of other Aggies and at least one other Tiger. If they go alternate possession on the held ball, which they will, Pacific is going to get its first offensive possession. Madeline Ennis. Inbounding for the Tigers in the white uniforms. Here comes Gogo across the Seiko stripe for Pacific. Ashby left side on the wing. Bouncer to the top of the wheel. They come up high for Elliott down low. Ashby reverse layup too soft. Not in great position to try the shot. And she missed it. One and done for the Tigers. And here come the Aggies. Sidney Burns top of the wheel. Get it to the high post. That'll be Norris. On the right is Mazatlan Harris. Turner will think about it. She'll stop from 13 away. Off the back of the rim, no good. Daylight Kitty with a rebound. And here come the Tigers on the break. Alley you feed to Ennis. Too tall for Manny. It goes out of bounds. And Pacific will cough up the basketball to the Aggies. UC Davis in dark blue uniforms, navy blue, with Depending on whether you're a state school or a religious school, you call it either Old Gold or Vegas Gold if you're one of the state schools. That just seems to be the way it goes. Shots on the way, left side. Turner couldn't have it. Coming up with the authority board was Liz Elliott. Gogo takes it across the wheel. Left side, they come. Katie's there. Deaton with the travel. 
Wanted her set up, she had a wide open baseline left to right and couldn't get the shot off. She travels with the ball. Aggies will take it. We don't have a score in this one. We've played a minute and a half from the Spano Center. Men here tomorrow night, they'll take on the Cal Poly Mustangs. Shot down low, up and no good, and Ennis with the rebound. That was 6'3 freshman Norris who tried the shot and missed it. Next action for the women, they'll wrap up the five-game homestand Saturday as they take on Nevada Las Vegas. Two o'clock start at the Spano Center. Backing down is Elliott. Kick it off on top for Deaton. Here's Gogo. Smith will direct the traffic around the left side of the circle. Has an opening for Ennis on the right side. Ennis provides the screen. Smith the shot. Clear the hole! It's up, it's down, and Liz Smith has hit her last seven three-point tries. The lead to Pacific at 3-0. Not quite the hot start they've had the last couple of games, but you'll take it. You'll take the 3-2 lead as the ball goes to Sydney Burns in the driveway. Burns with the shot. It's up a good. Smith, three ball again. Fire the hole! She saw the opening. She put up the three-pointer. It's up. It's down. Erica Adams will see action for the first time for the Tigers. Katie Eaton will take a quick breather. Might be a little frustrated at the uh, the traveling call. And she is going to just take a quick breather. Collector thinks she'll be back in just a little bit with the ball for UC Davis. It was Sussman. Turner has the top of the circle. Elliot feed taken away by Elliot. They never saw the ball inside as number 14 for the Tigers. Liz Elliott put the ball in her hands, got the outlet to the Tigers. Ball is loose, down low, whistle, foul, and that will go on Sussman. Sussman wrapped up with the body of Ashby. That'll be the first foul of the ball game and the first for Sussman. Inbounding will be Ashby. Sling and Sam will get a top of the circle. Go goes there, head to the right side. Ennis can pop a three-pointer. Likely won't, she didn't. Here's Adams, left side, Ashby three, too hard. She tried it from 21, went 23, it's out of bounds. And the Aggies will send it back the other way. They go from my left to my right. And they will shoot at their own basket per the rules in the second half of play. Sidney Burns, right side, comes top of the wheel. That was Norris. Now they come to Sussman. Tess trying to fake out Smith. That's hard to do. Whistle and offensive foul is going to go against the Aggies. And the foul away from the basketball is on Megan Norris. Norris has her first. The Aggies have their second. Tigers have kept it pretty clean. We've had fewer than a dozen foul shots in the last two games for Pacific. And they have flown right through those. Staring down the Aggies out to Smith to the right side. Ashby, here's Elegant. Off on the right is Adams. Wants the drive. Dribble drive in the driveway. Shots on the way. Hit the bottom of the iron and no good. It's out of bounds. And UC Davis will get it back. 6-22. First period. Pacific 6. The Aggies 2. Aggies 2-3 two and three in the year. Losing to the Wyoming Cowgirls here yesterday. That was 67 to 48. Three point game going into the fourth period and Wyoming just got red hot from the field. Shot down low, Mazetlaw and Harris sneaked around the Tiger defense, put the shot up off the feed and she got it in and it's 6-4. Pacific with the six. Smith directing traffic in the new play from Bradley Davis, rolling right side, then they'll get it instead of the driveway. That was Elliott, here's Smith. Wants the three, won't take it. Go to the right side, Elliott on the drive. Shots up, no good. Put that up over Norris. Norris providing just enough interference to slow the shot down. Aggies have it. Here, left side, Mazetlaw and Harris. In, out, in, out, finally out. Elliott gets the rebound and here comes Smith. Smith with four to beat. She'll bounce to the right side. Ashby is there in the driveway. Ashby, triple team shot up, good! Sling and Sam with her first points of the day, and it's an 8-4 Tiger lead. Deep three on the way. It is good. Uncontested, Yvonne Turner puts it up, puts it in. We'll see Rosie Schweitzer in the game in just a bit. A fresh troop for the post as Schweitzer. Had a really good game when Liz Elliott saw some foul trouble on Friday against the Cowgirls here. 5-14, first period, 8 for Pacific, 7 for the Aggies. 
Aggies members of the Big West Conference, they have won the last five conference tournaments in that league. Ashby left side, Smith, three ball on the way. Fire the ball! Kissed the bottom of the net, down it went, and Smith in fuego again with nine of the 11 points for Pacific. Aggies basketball, new players Megan Jones, 6'3 junior out of Scotland. Not the town in South Dakota, the country that's part of Great Britain. We've got a timeout, and that'll be the media timeout, I'm sure. That's what it will be. 11-7 Pacific, 4.45 of the first. CC Holmberg coming in when we're back on the WCC Network. Chase Chevrolet has been winning California business since 1944. <laughs> Get a little Stocktonian in you. I'm Steve. And I'm Jamie. And we're owners of Smitty's Wings and Things here in Stockton. As a former pro football player, Steve Smith knows about winning. Football and business is about teamwork. When they needed a new Tahoe for their business, a winning drive from the team at Chase Chevrolet was just a few clicks away. And then delivered our car the next day. So it was very easy. I would do it again. There's no competition. Chase Chevrolet. Buy into it. Tigers 11, UC Davis 7 with 4.45 of the first. This is the only game involving a West Coast Conference women's team that is going on today. Little bit of action on the men's side. Portland taking on Michigan State and Gonzaga will try to keep on its role as the Bulldogs will battle Xavier. Bulldogs and the Musketeers. They're out of Cincinnati. If you need to know that for some reason, here's Burns. Right side slipped. Put the shot up anyway and got it. She kind of slipped as she was trying to work around Smith. Got her balance back. Then put the shot up and in. Tigers lead it 11-9. They have had the lead the entire distance after the 0-0 tie for about two minutes in this one. Holmberg back in after missing Friday's game against Wyoming. She'll set it up. Down low. Schweitzer there. Up and good. Schweitzer showing the nice move inside of the baseline right side. And Rosie gets her first points of the game. 13 for Pacific, 9 for the UC Davis Aggies. Aggies set it up, down low, ball swatted away. It goes out, and that was off a of Tiger. Just nobody there along the baseline left side. One of the Tigers with the deflection. We come the other way, and Sidney Burns will inbound. And as soon as they position Burns correctly, underneath the Aggie basket, they've got 19 to get a shot off. They're down four at 13-9. Burns left side. Smith under top of the defense. Quick pass to the right side. Shot is on the way. It's up. It's good. Three-pointer. Nothing to it. Up and down for Yvonne Turner. That's her second three of the ball game. And she's been wide open for both. Tigers 13. Davis 12. Ashby left side. Sets it up on top. Adams there. 15. Line extended right. You got it. Erica Adams, first bucket. She stops and fires right through the free throw line. Little bit extended off the right. Put it up, put it in. Tigers three point lead, 15 12. Shots on the way for three. It's good. And with the red hot hand is Yvonne Turner for UC Davis. We are knotted up at 15. Calling out the new play is Jennifer Gross setting up the defense. Holmberg, left side, shot from five. Goes off the side of the rim and no good. Rebound is going to go into the hands finally of Holmberg, but then it goes out of bounds. And UC Davis will take the ball anyway. Checking in for the Aggies, Tova Sable, 5'11 junior, Stockholm, Sweden. She is a transfer from Penn State. And seeing action, Victoria Baker, 5'9 freshman from Austin, Texas. Tess Sussman. The Harvard graduate, she's a graduate student, 
in um, what is it? pharmaceutical chemistry is her graduate program at Davis. They have a, a lot of majors, and it's a great school. They have a lot of majors that sound a lot like that. Shots up for Sussman, no good. Ashby the rebound, slinging sand, gets it off of the outlet. Here comes Adams. She's on the right side. Room on the driveway. Kick it off on the right side, partially deflected. I think she wanted the shot. There was nobody there to pass it to. Aggies have it. Here they come on the fast break. On the drive, take it herself. Missing the shot was Baker. Down the floor they come to the Tigers, and the Tigers throw away the outlet. I think Ashby was anticipating the ball to bounce a little bit higher than it did, and it was a little further in front of her than she thought it was going to be, and it went out of bounds. Bradley Davis saying, settle down, ladies. You don't have to make everything up at once. There's really nothing to make up with the tie. First period, 2 and 15 to go. Katie Deaton coming back in in just a bit for the orange, black, and whites of the University of the Pacific. Smith on the steal. Go-Go will slow it down, set it up. Waiting to go to Holmberg, left side. On the top of the wheel, Schweitzer. Ashby alone, three, no. Tried the three-pointer, went off the side of the rim. Maybe just a bit too hard. You see that it was the Aggies. Bring it down, right side, Sussman. Three ball, no. Back of the iron, pinballed around, taken away by Turner. Yvonne Turner will direct traffic and set up the new offense for the Aggies. Trying to take their first lead of the game. And he pointed all, gives it to him as we're tied up. Ball rejected by Schweitzer. Here comes Smith on the break. One to beat. Shot on the way. No good. And a foul. That's good if it goes. But you'll send Gogo to the free throw line. She should get a pair here. Foul will go on Tova Sable, the 5'11 junior. Deaton replacing Ashby. Sam's had some good minutes here in period number one. Ashby along with Adams, Holmberg, Smith who's at the line, and Schweitzer. Go-Go eyes prize. First is on the way, and it's good. Tigers take the lead back at 16-15. They've never lost the lead, but it was tied at 15 for a couple of minutes here. Minute 29 to go in the first. Second, Smith. It's it. It's in. Give her an 11-point first quarter. She has just been on fire the last few games here for Pacific. And without Anaya James for the shooting, they've needed somebody to step up. A bunch of ladies have, but Smith in particular. Baker, the ball, top of the wheel, off the screen. Comes toward the left of the driveway. Shot is up. Good to foul. Baker got the shot. It just kind of died on the top of the rim and went down. You'll count the basket. You'll get the foul to Schweitzer, and Rosie's got her first. And that'll be the third team foul for the Tigers. McKenna Sanders, 5'8", senior from Sacramento, checks into the ball game. And at the free throw line, 69% free throw shooter, Victoria Baker. 5'9", freshman looks, fires, got it. Three-point play completed. And Davis, the Aggies had their first lead of the game. 18-17 the score. Liz will go to the right side. Daylight Katie on the wing to the right. Schweitzer up high, wants the driveway, takes the driveway, turns, shoots, missed it. It was deflected, and the Aggies are going to come down with it. And here they come in a hurry. Sussman, left-hand dribble, stops line extended. Bring it off to Baker, around the wheel, to the right, works on Holmberg, taken away by Smith, and here come the Tigers. On the baby break, it's Smith, finds room, shots up, no good. Ball is taken now by Sussman for Davis. It was there, but maybe a step too late on the shot for Liz Smith. Three ball on the way, no, back of the rim, no good. Rebound is pinballed around, finally comes to the Aggies. They'll keep it, you won't reset the clock, they get 15. Shot didn't hit the rim, and that is why the Aggies have 15, they've got eight to shoot, 11 left in the period. That's the situation there. Megan Jones, left side shot on the way, left side no good. That was Sanders, we've got two, we've got one. Smith at the buzzer, no. Just a little bit short, 18-17. Entertaining first period at that. UC Davis leading Pacific. We're back after you watch this on the WCC Network. Welcome to the College of the Pacific. 
where the arts and sciences intersect. I'm Professor Sharmila King, Chair of the Economics Department and the Faye and Alex Spanos Award for Distinguished Teaching. Let me show you around. COP is the liberal arts core of the university, offering courses in the humanities, the fine and performing arts, the social sciences, and the natural sciences. The college champions experiential learning through undergraduate research. You'll have many opportunities for hands-on learning through creative activity, field work, internships, and study abroad. Most of our classes are small, so we're going to get to know each other. I'll see you around campus. Eighteen seventeen, UC Davis leading Pacific after one period at the Spano Center. Tigers for the first period, six of 15 from the field. Perfect at the free throw line, three out of five from three pointers for 60%. The leading scorer, guess who? Liz Smith. Go, go, three out of four from the field, three out of three three pointers, and two for two at the line. After that, you've got a bunch of twos with Ashby, Adams, and Schweitzer. For the Aggies, they are shooting. 7 of 17 from the field, 3 of 8, 37 5 from three point range. And at the line, they are 1 out of 1. And that three point play for Baker. Aggies basketball to start the second. Their leading scorer, so you know, is nine points from Yvonne Turner. She almost made it 12, but missed the deep three. Ball is knocked loose, out of bounds. And Liz Elliott, a little bit slow getting up on the scrum. She's going after the basketball. Wasn't tackled at all, but uh, might have had uh, somebody lie on the right hand or something. She will remain in the ball game. And the inbound will come to UC Davis and Sable. Sable out of Stockholm, Sweden. And Penn State University out of the Big Ten. Down low they come. Sable in traffic. Turns and fires. It's no good. Got it off the glass, and it goes into the hands of Liz Smith. Here comes Gogo. Run of the offense. Left side they come. Deaton, three ball. Fire in the hole! Daylight. Katie saw the daylight from 22. Now on the other end, here's the three-pointer. That from Sable, and she missed it. Tigers lead it by two, 20 to 18, and down the floor they come. My right to my left. Smith looks for Deaton, finds her there on the wing to the right side. Top of the wheel, up high for Ennis. Here's Ashby slinging Sam, looks inside. Ball's taken away and taken away again. Ferns had it, Deaton got it back. On down low they come. Here is Elliott, Liz with the shot and the foul. Again, it's good if it goes more than likely, but she's fouled on the way up, and Elliott will get a couple of free throws. Checking back into the ball game is Megan Jones. She will replace Norris, who has her second foul. Liz Elliott, 6 one sophomore from Inglewood. 42% from the free throw line this year. Tigers lead it. 20 to 18 is the score. It is 21-18 as she gets the hometown roll. Goes to the back of the rim, then the front of the rim, and down it drops. Tigers three-point advantage at 21-18. 8.56 of the half. Second free throw good for Liz Elliott. Elliott now with two points. Janet Lucas, the athletic director at Pacific. My guest at halftime. We got an awful lot to talk about. Things on campus and around the conference. Got a whistle, and a foul is going to go. On the hand check, and that'll be on uh, Madeline Ennis, who doesn't disagree for a second. I said hand check, actually got it on the elbow. At any rate, Ennis picks up the foul. UC Davis has the ball, and a fresh 20. Fairly new rule. You don't get the complete reset of the clock. You've got to shoot within 20 seconds if you keep the possession. Shot on the other side. That was Tova Sable who missed it. 
Aggie somehow got the rebound. Bunch of Tigers underneath. Burns rolls around, won't go. Rebound is to Elliott and a foul. Foul is going to go on Annis and Bradley Davis cannot believe that foul went on Maddie Ennis. Ennis will sit down, she'll have to with the two fouls. CC Holmberg will check in. Ennis cannot believe that foul was called. She didn't say anything. Bradley Davis did. Broadcast will keep its G rating, but you could tell he was plenty hot at the free throw line is Sydney Burns. She's 56% from the field and missed the first one. She will get another free throw then. Tigers off until Saturday after this one with the team projected to be number one in the Mountain West. Nevada, Las Vegas coming in. That's a two o'clock start here at the Spano Center. Find tickets on the website at PacificTigers.com. Second free throw good, 22-19, Pacific leading. Tigers basketball, Deaton high left. Heads to the left side, Holmberg game in corner to the left side. Down low they come. Here's the shot from Elliott, too hard, no good. In traffic, gets her own rebound finally after it's pinballed around. Then it goes out of bounds. And the Aggies will bring the basketball back up the other way. Wasn't a lot of room that time for Elliott after she got the rebound. And that was tipped around by probably a good three UC Davis players. And then it finally got into the hands of Elliott. And she tried to rework the offense, just couldn't hang on, and went off the tightrope. Back in is Megan Jones for the Aggies. Aggies trail by three. Shot off the front of the iron, no good. Burns will try the deep three, that's good. Three-pointer is up, three-pointer is good. 22-22, our score once again. Davis has only led one time, and that was by a point at 18-17. Go, go, yo-yo's the dribble. Say that five times fast. Down low they come, Elliott alone, hacked and fouled. That is more than likely, and I'm correct on that, more than likely going to go on Megan Jones. Out of Ayr, A-Y-R, Scotland. Elliott to the free throw line. There she is down low. And there's the foul as they got the arm. As the shot was leaving Elliott's hand. She looks, fires, got the first. She's perfect at the line so far today. And the Tigers lead it now. A one point advantage at 23-22. Aggies losing by 19 to Wyoming here at the Spano Center on the Tiger Turkey tip-off. That was Saturday afternoon. Second free throw is good. Ball right side, Turner, Yvonne three, side of the rim, wouldn't go. Deaton the rebound. Nice job by Daylight Katie coming down with the board. Bouncer left side, now they set it up for Elliott. Her shot's on the way, no good. Elliott out of position, had a couple of Aggies on her. Tried the shot, couldn't get it done. UC Davis will take the ball around the wheel to the right. Jones is there. Here's Turner. She'll spin around on top for Burns. Sydney Burns, right side. Ball is going to be whistled dead as the offensive foul is going on UC Davis. Foul is on Yvonne Turner. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have her in foul trouble. Bradley Davis thinking. And so is Gary. And Yvonne will have her first of the game against nine points. 24-22, three fouls in the quarter for Davis. Two for the Tigers. Holmberg, left side, baseline, stops and fires. Seven-footer, too hard, no good. Ball coming to UC Davis, Aggies. Left side, thinking three, firing three from Amen corner. It's good. Mazetlan Harris, the 6'2 sophomore. Puts the shot up and in, and Davis leads for just the second time today, 25-24. Tiger slowing it down, setting it up, then Elliott the three, make that Smith, flare in the hole! Liz Smith did it again, again, excuse me. Perfect from the line, uh, beyond the line, the three-point line. I think she's perfect from the free throw line today as well. Aggies basketball, Tigers lead, 27-25. Ball left side, Jones is there, looks down low. Bouncer on the down low, shots up and good. Yvonne Turner just backdooring the Tiger defense. 
And she put it up and put it down. Tie score, 27, 27, five and 35 to go. Come to the top of the circle, Holmberg on the other end. Loses the ball on the down low. Ball will come into the hands of the Aggies and it's another turnover for Pacific. Ball coming, right side, thinking, firing, shots up, good. That was Tess Sussman who tried it. She wasn't sure she was going to pass it and then found the opening and thought, well, let's just see what happens. And you saw what happened, 29-27. Aggies the lead of two, biggest lead of the game. Here is Elliott, down low, shots up, partially blocked, gets it back, puts it up, can't have that one. A third opportunity for the Tigers, can't by the thrill and the rebound on the way to Davis. Here is Burns, three-pointer, puts that up over Deaton, missed it. Rebound, uncontested, Mazatlan Harris. UC Davis reworking the offense. They've got 11 to shoot. Got the fresh 20 after the miss. Ball around the wheel, right side. Here with her for just a second was Harris. Shots on the way, Jones, three, no. A lot of three-point shooting going on today. Whistle timeout called, 4.27 to go. First half, zipping right along in this one, 29-27, Aggies back after this on the WCC Network. Welcome to the Department of Speech-Language Pathology in the School of Health Sciences. I'm Professor Derek Izetti, and I specialize in voice disorders. Let me show you around. Pacific is a national leader in undergraduate clinical education and one of the few speech-language pathology programs in the nation to offer undergraduate clinical experience. Our department is housed in a state-of-the-art facility with high-tech classrooms, private clinic therapy rooms, a well-stocked materials room with all of the latest assessment and treatment materials, and a spacious clinical observation hallway. You will have many opportunities for hands-on learning through stimulating academic courses, our numerous on-campus clinics and specialized clinical programs, student research projects, and the option to study abroad. Our classes are small, so we're gonna to get to know each other very well. I'll see you around campus. Four twenty-seven, first half, UC Davis 29, Pacific 27. Liz Smith's three-pointers saving the bacon of the Tigers right now. As from three-point range, there's 71.4% from the field. Eight of 22 from twos and threes and everything else. Six of six at the free throw line. Aggies, 11 of 29 shooting. 16 three-point shots, and they've made five. And the Tigers would be in a world of hurt right now. Some of those close threes had dropped. I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir when I'm saying that. 14 points. Liz Smith leading everybody. Yvonne Turner with 11 the number one scorer for the Yankees. Ashby left side, stops, fires, good. Fire in the hole, Sam Ashby puts it up and in. Tigers take the lead right back at 30 to 29. Pretty shot from the Australian, Sam Ashby. Almost put that one up from Perth, Australia, her hometown. Burns, left side, bouncer to aim in corner, losing it and getting it back was Sussman. Wave a whistle with a body. On the floor for the Tigers, that was Ashby. Taking a couple of spills this afternoon. We come the other way as Pacific will take the ball back. Try to pad a one point lead, three and 55 to go with the second period. Ball to the right side, now to the left. Adams is in, shot deflected. Ball is fought for by uh, Schweitzer. And one more Aggie, that would have been Jones. All of the possession keeps it in Pacific's hands. 21 seconds to get a shot off. 3.4, or uh, 3.47 to go. Inbounding is Deaton. Gotta get it to somebody. Finally to us. There's Schweitzer backing down, turns, fires too hard, no good. Schweitzer had the opportunity as the defender fell and it just wouldn't go down for her. She put it up just to scotch too hard. Around the circle to the right side, Nia Epps seeing her first play of the day. 5'10 freshman from El Cerrito. Ball to the right, shot from the right, on the way good. Megan Jones, the one-hander. Sydney Ward is in for the first time for Pacific. Ward, the freshman out of Houston. 
Texas that is. Ward's on top. Left side they come to Adams. Looks down low, Schweitzer tied up. Top of the wheel for Ashby, around the circle to the right. Right hand dribble, thinks the shot, won't take it. Schweitzer will, she misses. One and done for Schweitzer and the Tigers as the rebound comes to Jones. And down the floor they go, left to right, shots up. You will not count the bucket because she stepped out of bounds. Naya Epps, A-man corner, made the shot but won't get the points. As one of the feet just barely crossed the line, out of bounds it goes. Tigers down one, down they come. Adams around the wheel. No room in the driveway, get it to Ashby. Sling and Sam will bring it to Deaton. Daylight Katie around the horn, looking for some help for Schweitzer. Schweitzer comes with a nice screen. Here's Deaton's shot, it is way high, and off the back of the rim and no good. Trying to get it up over a pretty tall Davis defense and a little too high. Rejected by Schweitzer and picks up the foul. They wanted the shot down low. Schweitzer gets the block and does get part of the body, as you see in the replay. So the foul is something that was called for and called. Schweitzer will sit down. Elliott will check back in for Pacific. Ashby, Ward, Elliott, who's back in, Smith, and Deaton. Five on the floor for the Tigers at the free throw line is Epps, 57% foul shooter, made that one. And it'll help the percentage escosh for the El Cerrito, California product. She'll look again. Spies, shoots, got it. 33-30, Aggies leading the Tigers. Just a three-pointer away from tying this one. There's a lot of basketball to be played left here. In the final game of the Tiger Turkey tip off, 18-footer Smith dropped and fouled. And Liz will go to the line for two. And with about a 17-footer, she was well inside the three-point line. You're fouled behind the three-point line, and you get three foul shots. Liz will just get two here. The Go-Go's had uh, another good day with 14 points. She has yet to commit a foul. Five team fouls now for UC Davis. So Pacific shoots the rest of the period. Two minutes and 19 to go. First for Smith is good. Product of Bradenton, Florida's IMG Academy is Smith. The 5'9 junior. You see your stats there. 15 points a game. And she just hit 16. So that'll kick her average up a notch as well. 2 and 15 to go. Tigers down 1, 33 32. On the other end, it's up. It's good. Naya Epps puts on the afterburners, gets past the Tiger defense, and gets the bucket. 35 32. Aggies the lead. Up on the high post. Smith from Elliott. Shot for three. Back of the rim and no good. She doesn't miss a lot of those. Ball is taken away finally. It was loose in the driveway, and it comes into the hands of Sussman. Sussman driving. Stops at the baseline left side. Nice job by Ford defensively. Oh, Sydney's shown some really good minutes as a freshman here at Pacific. Rolling toward the right. Baker lost the ball. We come the other way. And an offensive foul is a call against UC Davis. Tigers can cut it to one or tie it up, depending on a successful shot here. Minute and 39 to go, except the... Scoreboard clock isn't moving right now. Officials caught that. They'll take a few seconds off the clock. Neither scoreboard clock was working. Neither the game clock, which has been bumped down to a minute 35, so you take four seconds off the shot clock like you did the uh, game clock. And the Tigers had 26 to shoot with the inbound. Deaton shot too hard, no good. Tried it from eight, went 11. Rebound coming into the hands of UC Davis. Shot is on the way, three-pointer good. Yvonne Turner wide open, amen corner. It's up, it's in, and UC Davis leads by six. Aggies 38, Pacific 32. Deaton looks for help. Elliott's there, death low on the feet. Uh, Deaton with the shot, it's good. Nice passes, Deaton cut through the back door and put the shot up and in. It's 38-34 right now. Janet Lucas, again, the athletic director at Pacific. Visit with me in halftime. Ball on top. Jones is there. 
Top of the circle, thinking about it with Sussman. She'll drive and shoot, it's no good. Nothing but white uniforms underneath. Rebound coming to Elliott. Smith will bring it down. Smith rounded the point for the Tigers. Right side, Ashby, slinging Sam, looks low, comes up on high for Gogo, shot for three. Fire the hole! Liz Smith hits another three. It's down to one point. The deficit for Pacific with 23 seconds left in the half. Shot clock is off. Aggies lead it 38-37. Baker will slow it down, set it up. Really nobody moving on the court right now. They've got 12, they've got 11. Waiting for the coach to say get started. They get started. Baker to the baseline right side. Taken away by Smith. They've got five, they've got four. Smith with one to beat. Lost the basketball, got it back. Puts it up at the buzzer too hard, no good. That was a shot that probably wasn't going to go for Liz after she fell. She tried the fadeaway J with one hand, kind of a pressure shot. Had to put something up at the buzzer, and it didn't work out. But entertaining game after one, 38-37, UC Davis leading Pacific. And Janet Lucas, the athletic director for Pacific, joining me at halftime. You watch this, and we're back on the WCC Network. Real soon. Thirty-eight, thirty-six. The score as UC Davis is leading the Tigers. It was thirty-eight, thirty-seven, but then the official came by and corrected the uh, official score that the last three-point shot was actually a two. So. It's a two-point hill instead of one point, but that's okay. Get them back with uh, 20 more minutes of basketball to come up. One of the busier people on the University of the Pacific campus joining me at halftime, and that is Janet Lucas, the athletic director. Hi, Janet. Hello. Good afternoon. It's great to be here today and getting to watch this game with our women's team. That's right. It's exciting. And uh, the women have just been out like gangbusters. This is really a fun team to be able to watch this year. They are a very special group of young women. Um, quite a few of them fought through COVID together. Um, last year, we said they were a young team. They rarely had the same starting lineup due to injuries and illness, and they fought through that together. So we're really ex excited to see them come together this year. They're still a young team, don't get me wrong, but their hard work off the court is really gonna pay off. You could start to see their resolve evolve over the summer and build into the fall and they got really ready for this season and they have something to prove it's great to see sam back from injury i know we've got a few unexpected scenarios as well but to see this group gel as a team both on the court but as a team mm -hmm. is going to make this season really exciting one of the things that i really love about athletics at pacific and i don't know if i've really seen that at any other school i've been connected with is if you go to water polo, you'll see basketball players there. If you go to a baseball game, some of the water polo team, you have just an exciting atmosphere at Kelseth Pool when either the men's or the women's teams are playing. So how important is that family atmosphere at this school? To me, it's particularly important. We're very focused on providing a student-athlete experience that is unique to Pacific, and that's one that's centered on connections in a relationship-rich environment. Um, family is one of the four pillars for our athletic program. And so it's really important to me that we live that. So when a student walks in to any office or talks with any athletic department employee, I want them to be heard and supported through the good times and the challenging times. And I think that does make a difference. And then you add to that our wonderful faculty who work hard to support and guide all of our students. Um, they make a difference as well. And when you have these combined efforts, it's a real chance for our student athletes to be successful athletically, academically, and in life. And, and that's exciting. When you look at the academic numbers, uh, they're nothing to sneeze at here. You've got some really great grade points among some of the teams. Yeah, our average GPA at this point is a 3.21. We are extremely proud of that. Uh, they work hard at what they do and how they do it. That's part of being a Pacific student athlete. Let's take a look at uh, something coming up a little bit later on the week. Uh, our focus on Berkeley with the uh, Tigers winning the conference championship. Now off to the NCAAs, and uh, they get this Aggie squad, at least in water polo, on uh, Thursday. What a great feather in the cap for a team that's really worked hard and had a great season. Yeah, It's tremendous. We're building new memories with this experience across the board. 
this is a group of young men that have been focused on their goals since the off season in the spring. They have never lost sight of what they wanted to accomplish this year. Plus, they've done it while also building, developing, and sustaining a team culture that really guides it through the tough times. And so we're all really looking forward to seeing them compete at Berkeley um, the end of this week and hopefully into Sunday as well. And uh, if you want to see an incredible atmosphere for water polo, as befits water polo you certainly, you need to spend a day or an evening at uh, Kelseth Pool because if I'm a visiting coach, I'm afraid to come there. Yeah. <laughs> There's an energy to it and an excitement that's organic. You can't just create it. You can feed it, but it comes from students supporting students, our community supporting this program. We've got some homegrown talent on men's water polo, which adds to it as well. And I love the combination. It is a great place to compete, but a great place to watch a game as well. Uh, the West or West Coast Conference in between commissioners right now. I don't think anyone's going to say that Gloria Navarez doesn't deserve an opportunity in the Mountain West Conference, and she'll do really well there. But what is the search like, and what will Pacific's role be in that search for a new league commissioner? Well, we're looking forward to getting the search going as soon as possible. I know the CEOs were very focused on that in a recent meeting. We've got an interim commissioner named who will start December 1, and they're looking at hiring the best search firm to find the right leadership for the WCC as we move forward because we don't want to lose any ground in a transition um, and we don't need to. We've got such a strong conference and we want to keep it moving forward. And the best way to do that is to get permanent leadership in place as soon as we can. And there aren't a lot of mid-majors that had the national exposure like the West Coast Conference. I mean, Gonzaga is pretty much a fixture in the men's basketball tournament. You've got BYU in here and uh, some other of Portland's playing Michigan State in men's basketball today. So that national exposure for the WCC is something that's great. And you, you have to believe and you have to hope that will continue. Absolutely. It's wonderful for our athletic programs, for our student athletes, but also wonderful for all of our institutions. And that's where the legacy of Pacific athletics becomes really important. We want to keep growing that legacy through all of our sports, and men's water polo is just the most recent to do that. I'm uh, taking a look at uh, another couple of years down the road, I guess. What are some of the goals for the athletic department here at UOP? Um, we do want to do it our way. And I think that becomes really important. That connects the family atmosphere you were talking about earlier. But we want to keep building competitively without losing any ground academically. We want to graduate wonderful citizens. These are normal goals, but with the right coaches in place, with the right staff in place, we create that experience that then brings other recruits to our campus, other student athletes who want to be a part of really creating a legacy. Um, that is very, very special, and leaving their legacy as individuals, which I think is fantastic. This women's basketball team is a great example. We've got a lot of wonderful student athletes mm -hmm. on the team, but they play with and for each other, and you don't always find that in a team sport. When you take a look at something that happened, my very first exposure here, and I was so impressed that this happened, uh, I, I came to watch a practice just to kind of see what I was getting into, and uh, Coach Davis asked every one of the players to come over and say hi to me uh, at the end just so they could get to know me a little bit and me then. And that was just such a classy thing for Bradley to do. And I'm never going to forget something like that. And I've never had it happen before with the yeah. team either. It, it's a very welcoming environment, whether you are part of the staff, as you are, or part of the fan base. Um, I'll give you even a personal example with our volleyball team. When, whenever I would go to a volleyball practice, when they hit a point where a drill had stopped, Every single one of them would come up to me and say hello, give me a high five, and then they'd go back to practice. Um, this is a great representation of who our student athletes are as people, who our coaches are, and what their values are. And that's the foundation that becomes really, really important. Uh, a new addition to the, uh, the athletic venues here, and it's something uh, I have to admit I have not seen this yet, but... Uh, of course, uh, the Tigers have not sponsored football in probably 25 years or so. Doesn't look like it's coming back, but a wonderful memory-filled plaza here over by the Aquatic Center yes. that, uh, that you have here. Tell me about Stag Plaza. Yeah, Stag Memorial Football Plaza was a dream. As I came through the door about four and a half years ago, there wasn't a football alum I met who didn't also go, but I'm still mad at Pacific. And they're too much a part of the history of this program and the foundation of this program mm -hmm. to me for them to feel that way. We are so proud of them. 
as a part of Pacific and a part of our athletic program that we wanted to find a way to acknowledge that and then reconnect. And I think Stag Plaza did that, the football reunion, um, the Hall of Fame event, the pure joy that brought people back to this campus decades later uh, just changed things. And I'm really, really proud of that. All right. And I'm having so much fun with these ladies. I appreciate the opportunity. And I appreciate the, the uh, chance to talk with you again, Janet. Uh, have fun uh, the rest of the half here in the men's game tomorrow and certainly with the NCAAs the, uh, later on in the week. I will. Thank you so much. All Look right. forward to the second half. Janet Lucas, the athletic director at the University of the Pacific. Always a pleasure to visit with her. And uh, she loves every one of these events. And you can just see the momentum building at the university with sports. This is a team, the women's basketball team, they won six games last year. And uh, now they are on their way, hopefully, for uh, game number five or win number five with a tough slate coming up in non-conference and conference play. Let us take a quick break. Give me a couple of minutes. We'll all catch our breath and I'll look at first-half statistics. UC Davis, the advantage of three points over Pacific. We're back after you watch this on the WCC Network. Hi, I'm Samantha and I'm a graduate student at the University of the Pacific. Today, I wanna to give you a campus tour of UOP. Let's go. First, we have the Rosie University Center. The UC is a great place to grab a bite to eat, study, or hang out with friends. You can also buy all of your UOP gear at the bookstore right next to the UC. There's a big lawn in front of the UC, perfect for tanning, playing Frisbee, or bringing your dog out for a walk. The Bond Student Fitness Center has everything you need to work out, including a rock tower, student personal trainers, and a Tiger X group fitness program. Now let's check out our athletic facility. We host our basketball games. I would show you inside, but the doors are locked, so let's move on to the rest of our athletic facilities. Overall, the University of the Pacific Thirty-eight, thirty-six. UC Davis and the Aggies leading the Pacific Tigers. It was first thought 38-37, but a three-pointer was switched to a two. Uh, they corrected the official score right at the beginning of the half. So it's 38-36 right now. And here's how things look as we rock the document for the first half. Tigers 11 of 31 from the field, 35.5%. 67% from three-point range and perfect at the line of 8-4-8. Eight eight. Leading scorer, Liz Smith, 19 points already. Five of seven from the field. Five of six three-point territory and four for four at the line. Five points for Katie Deaton. Four for Liz Elliott. Couple of points each for Erica Adams and Rosie Schweitzer. And that's how things look for the Tigers in the first half of play. As far as the Aggies, 14 of 33, 42%, rounding that off a bit. Three-point territory, 35%, 6 of 17, 4 of 5 at the line. Their leader, 14 points from Yvonne Turner, 5 of 10 shooting. She's tried six three-pointers and made four of those. Need to get a little bit more of a bead drawn on uh, Yvonne Turner, number 15 for the Aggies. Turnovers, UCD with five points from turnovers, 14 in the paint, four second chance points, 11 on fast breaks and nine off the bench. Pacific, been a tough half. None from turnovers, six points from the paint, no second chance points or fast break points, and four points off the bench. And our score here, 38-36. As we start the second half of play from the Spano Center, Tiger Manor here tomorrow night. They'll take on Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, one of three Cal Polys now in the state of California. Of course, Cal Poly Pomona down in the L.A. area. And now Humboldt State is Cal Poly Humboldt, but it's the uh, San Luis Obispo edition that will come here for 7 o'clock game tomorrow night. Zach Bayrudy has it here. 
on the WCC Network and also on Fox Sports AM 1280. Aggies ball to start the half. Tess Sussman with the three-pointer. It's good. She was open for the three as they passed around the Tiger defense, broke the rhythm, put the shot up, put it in. Five-point lead for the Aggies, 41-36. Tigers bring it down, my left to my right. Ennis has it, right side, she'll drive, won't take the shot, and a traveling violation, and deservedly so, is going to go on Ennis as she tried to set up around Turner and carried the ball as she worked toward the baseline, right side to left side. 9 and 20 to go, just underway. Third period, 41-36, UC Davis leading. They'll try to make it a 7 or 8 point advantage. Here's the shot, 3 ball, good. Mazatlan Harris sets up on the high right. She puts it up, she puts it in. Counted up for Harris at 44 to 36. The 6'2 sophomore from San Diego nailing the three pointers. Smith left side, go go, puts it up and good. Stop the bleeding a little bit as the Tigers now down by six at 44-38. Five consecutive conference championships in the Big West have gone to this UC Davis squad, a squad that is trying to kind of find its land legs. They shoot down low, shot is up and good. That was Harris who tried it. She's great outside. She was good that time inside. As she got it, fired it over the Tiger defense. 46-38, ball is loose. Deaton will have it. Daylight Katie reworks the offense with 15 to shoot. Ball swatted away from Ennis. Deaton got it back. Heads to Amen corner on the left side of the baseline. Deaton, it was rejected. Ennis tried the shot. Here's Elliott with the try. That is up too soft. Gets it back. No good foul. That's why you want more than, opportun- more than one opportunity down low because if you get a second, if you need a third, you get that. Eventually you score, or eventually you're going to send somebody to the free throw line. And in this case, it's Elliott. Liz with four points. She's had a good day at the line. All of the Tigers have as they've been perfect on the day. Shot, no. Went off the back of the rim, skied, and went off the other side, no good. So the Inglewood, California product. Home of the Staples Center and the Forum and the airport. I think the airport's in Inglewood. They call it LAX, but it's right in the Inglewood area. And if you need to correct my geography, you're welcome to do so. Here's the shot on the way. The one-hander up and good. Need to start finding an answer for Mazatlan Harris as she's smoking hot here in this third period. 48-39. 48-39, Aggies by nine, Tigers basketball. Ennis, right side, Deaton has it on the wing. Get it off on top, Ashby, slinging Sam, three, no. Back of the iron goes into the hands of Harris. And here comes a fast break for the Aggies. Missed the first one, trying for another opportunity. Turner, she lost it, Tigers have it. Here comes Gogo across the stripe, left side, amen corner. Deaton drives the baseline left to right, shots of the way, good. Daylight Katie finds some daylight in the baseline. She put the shot up. She put the shot in, 48-41. Long way to go in this one. Tigers need to get a move on. Davis is crewing. They have some pretty decent shooting here. With the ball momentarily with Sussman. She squirts it off to the right side. Wide open, Harris. Mazitlan puts that one up too short. Tigers on the board. Deaton with one to beat. Works on... Evans, or Burns rather, and Katie Deaton hit the floor and hard, and she is favoring that right arm. Hit the arm or the elbow at any rate, she is in a huge amount of pain right now. The senior transfer from Northern Colorado and North Dakota State, she will have to lead the ball game, and Erica Adams will check in. Tigers trail at 48-41, 6.52. We've been up and down all over the place. Very fast-paced ball game here at the Spano Center. It looks like Deaton is at least able to move the hand. That's good because if, if the arm or the elbow were broken, that wouldn't be a very strong possibility. But she's shaking the hand off, maybe just a deep bruise. And I'm not going to speculate any further from that because then I'll get started on the uh, nation's HIPAA laws. And neither one of us want to do that. 6.52, third quarter. 
And Erica Adams will go to the free throw line. She is shooting these foul shots for Deaton. As she came into the game for Katie while she's getting looked over by the training staff. Free throw good. Need every one of those you can get today. Down six at 48-42. Adams gets one more. She eyes the prize for the second. It's on the way. No. Front of the rim and back of the rim and no good. But the Tigers are going to keep the ball. Left side, here's Adams. Set it up down low in the driveway. Shot for Elliott. Can't have it. Points in the paint have just not gone the way of the Tigers today. Elliott had the shot and it just wouldn't drop for him. That has happened an awful lot today. Ball comes down low. Swatted away. With it is Norris. She'll kick it off on top on the drive on the shot. No good. That was Epps who tried it and missed it. And we come the other way to Pacific. Pretty good sized scrum going after the basketball on the baseline. It's knocked out by Epps. Tigers bring it back. Over the exhortations of UC Davis 1997 graduate Jennifer Gross. She played some pro ball too in Denmark and in Israel. Whistle foul away from the basketball. I don't know if there was a violation. There was a foul. Goes on Epps. Tigers will do the inbound. And Lou Smith does the honor. Go go along with Ennis. Ashby is in there. She wanted the shot. She tried it. It's good. Finger roll layup down low. Need to get Ms. Ashby hot there. Slinging Sam now with seven. It's 48-44. Here's the shot. On the way. No good. Rebound controlled. It is up and it is good. And Norris just stripped it away from two Tiger defenders. This is a team that has had some trouble, as I said, maybe finding its land legs a little bit. But uh, they're out here. Red hot today, another miss down low. That was Elliott. Liz is showing some frustration right now. And sometimes, it didn't happen that time, but sometimes that can lead to what's called a frustration foul. You just kind of slap away at things in your frustration to pick up a foul. Elliott, to her credit, did not. Ball pinballed around off the miss. Shot is up, shot is good. Give it to Norris for two, and it's 52 44. Whatever the Texas low play, that's what Bradley Davis wants. And Liz Smith announces to the team that that's what we're doing here. So they'll set that up. They've got 14 to get a shot off. 505 in the third. Smith bumps the bodies, keeps control. Ball is loose, goes out of bounds. I think the Tigers should get that back. It either went off of Ennis or went off of Sussman. <laughs> and maybe a timeout was called before any of that happened. Okay, they're saying that the uh, Pacific player was out of bounds. Not a lot of argument that time by the uh, coaching staff or the Pacific players. So, media timeout is the call. 4.58 to go on the third. Aggies by eight at 52.44 back after this on the WCC Network. Hello everyone, my name is Isla Shaw. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm currently a sophomore at the University of the Pacific, majoring in business administration. And welcome to Grace Cavell Hall. With over 175 rooms, Grace Cavell Hall is the biggest residential hall on Pacific's campus. Living on campus is one big part of what makes Pacific feel like home. It helps you fit into the campus community right away. The rooms start as a blank canvas, but once you bring your belongings, your bedding, your art, it is an amazing opportunity for you to show your personality. Quick tip, I recommend you bring a refrigerator so you can have your snacks on hand. Fifty-two forty-four. UC Davis leading Pacific in non-conference play at the Spano Center here in Stockton. I'm Gary Ellenvolts. Glad we're together on this Sunday afternoon. Be quite a bit happier if the Tigers can get their third consecutive win as UOP trails by eight, but plenty of time 
to get back to the rodeo. Big win by 14 points over a good Wyoming squad on Friday to lead off the Tiger Turkey tip-off. Aggies basketball, UC Davis with the lead at 52-44. Burns sets it up down low, that's Sussman. And <laughs> hitting the deck is Liz Smith. Offensive foul is going to go on Megan Norris. That'll be the fourth team foul for the Aggies. And the Tigers have not fouled in this half. Smith with 21 points. She had 19 of the first half. She had the ball for a second. Schweitzer has it up high. Looks for Smith. Liz is there. Go-Go looking for help down to the driveway. Everybody's covered. 13 to get the shot off. Here's Ashby rolling around. Fancy Dan dribble. Stop of the wing. Down low Schweitzer. She's double teamed over to Ennis. Foul. Whistle and a foul, and that's going to go on Epps. Good aggressive offense that time for the Tigers as they wanted to set it up down low. Schweitzer was there, got the feed to Ennis, and the Tigers get to shoot because that's five fouls for the Aggies. Ennis, first good. Huh, get every one of those, will you? 52 45, seven point. Advantage now. Second shot on the way. Missed that one. And out of bounds it goes off the Aggies. Pacific gets it back. They'll keep it on their end and can cut the deficit to five or four, depending on what they get, if anything, here. Megan Jones is in for uh, Davis. Megan Norris will sit down for the Aggies. Tigers ball. 18 to shoot, 418 to play. Shot for three, fire in the hole! Up and down it goes for Adams. Erica now with six. Tigers have cut it to four at 52 to 48. Burns alone, three, good. Those uh, three-point shots coming a little too easily for the Aggies today. Ashby, other end. Off-balance shot wouldn't go. That would have been a circus shot had it go, had it gone. It didn't. And one and done for the Tigers. Aggies bring it down. Right side, that is Jones. Megan will get it off to Burns. Sydney Burns around the circle off the screen. Kick it to the left side. Aim in corner, three ball good. Nia Epps puts it in, puts it down. 58-48, guess it was just a two because it was 56 and now it's 58. My math education is weak as it was and that my own doing. Save me that time. Shot for Schweitzer, no good. That wanted to drop in the worst way. Finally decided not to. Aggies on the collective horses and that is actually the athletic logo for the UC Davis school. Very good school on the western side of the state of California, right outside Sacramento. Just three miles separate Sacramento State from UC Davis. Ball taken away by Schweitzer on the block. Ashby on the roll. Left wing. Smith trying to get open. Can't uh, get go-go fresh, so they'll go to the top of the circle for Ennis. On the right, here's Adams. Rolls toward the driveway. She stops, sets it up low. Schweitzer's there, puts it up, missed it. Oh, the inside shot, points in the paint, just not falling, not happening for the for the Tigers. Going up for her second opportunity and fouled was Epps. And three fresh bodies coming in. CeCe Holmberg, who did not play on Friday against Wyoming, she's back in. Elliott comes in, here's Deaton replacing Adams, Schweitzer, and Ennis. Tigers down 10, 58 48, 218, third period. UNLV, the next dance on the card. That's a 2 o'clock game next Saturday here at the Spano Center. I'll be happy to tell you all about it on the WCC network, or better yet, if you're in the area, just come on out and see a very fine group of young ladies play basketball against a really good Nevada Las Vegas squad. Rebels pick to win the Mountain West Conference. In between that, well, you've got water polo with the men of the w or NCAA championships at Berkeley. 
And there's basketball tomorrow night as the Tiger men will take on Cal Poly San Luis Obispo at 7 o'clock. Elliott down low, shoots, no good. Here is Deaton the rebound, that won't go. Elliott might get another try. She'll kick it out instead to Ashby. Three ball, slinging Sam, back of the rim and no good. Then front of the rim and no good. Ball is loose, it goes out of bounds, goes to the Aggies. And another player hitting the floor and hard was Elliott. Glad to tell you that Katie Deaton is back in the ball game. Deaton landed on her arm and uh, might have banged up her elbow pretty good, but uh, she's a trooper, she's in the game, got a whistle, and it's away from the basketball, and that's Smith with the foul of the elbow. That's her first foul against 21 points, second team foul of the period. Pacific has done a very nice job this year of keeping teams off the foul line, especially in the multiple foul situation. With some very fast basketball games accordingly. Ball taken away. Daylight Katie, one to beat. Find Smith. Go, go with the shot. It is good. 59 to 50. Tigers not coming away on the home floor here in the third and final game of the Tiger Turkey tip off in Stockton, California. Ball on top. Megan Jones is there. Sets up left side. Shot is up for three. No. That was Mazatlan Harris. Second shot wouldn't go. Elliott, the authority board. Here come the Tigers with a minute and five to go in the third. Deaton, left-hand dribble in the driveway, just about lost it, falls down, go to the left side. Holmberg drives the baseline, stuffs to the top of the wheel. Get it off to Ashby. Slinging Sam's shot is no good. Bradley Davis wanting a foul in the worst way, clapping his hands to get the official attention to say, I wanted a foul in the worst way, and it didn't happen. Davis basketball, 43, 42 seconds. There's 18 to shoot for the Aggies. Here's we rowdy on down in the third period. Ball left side, Sidney Burns, right-hand dribble, quick pass off to the right. A-man corner they come, that is Sable, Toba Sable checking in. Top left side, Burns three, no good. Went off the back of the rim. She basically had to put that shot up. It hit the rim, so if the Aggies would have gotten the rebound, they get the fresh possession off that, but it didn't happen. So the Tigers will work for one. 59, 57 seconds to go. Smith for three. Fire the hole! Six point ball game as we wrap up period three. UC Davis 59, Tigers 53. And we're back after you take a look at this. Interesting fourth period ahead of the WCC Network. My name is Isla Shaw and I'm currently a sophomore at the University of the Pacific majoring in business administration. And right behind me is the Morris Chapel. Let's go check it out. Morris Chapel is a multi-faith place for all students to worship, pray, and meditate. The stained glass windows were donated by a church in San Francisco in the 1930s. The chapel was designed around these windows. Morris Chapel is one of the most popular places for weddings around the area. Many of our alumni come back to get married here. The meditation room is a private setting for students of all faiths to meditate, do yoga, or pray. Nine point lead for the Yankees, 59-53. I said nine at six because Smith hit that last uh, second three point shot, didn't she? And Liz Smith has just been on fire today. Go, go with 26 points, 8 of 10 shooting for the game, 4 of 4 from free throws. She has tried seven three pointers and she's made six of them. Tigers for the game, brutal, 17 to 47 for 36%, 8 of 13 three pointers, and 11 of 14 at the free throw line. Leading scorer for UC Davis is Yvonne Turner with 14. 22 of 49 shooting for the Aggies at 45%. 10 of 25 three point range and five of seven. They've turned 25 three pointers. And they've made 10, 40%. That's a pretty good number when you're talking about three point shots. Tigers ball to start the fourth. Tigers are down by six at 59 53. 
Gogo up top, comes up top. Holmberg set up the nice screen, goes down to Elliott. She wants set up down low. Ashby tried it, missed it. Coming back with it, the Aggies and Megan Jones. Sydney Burns over the Seiko stripe for the Aggies. And the Road Navy with the gold trim. Little bit of white in there if you look hard. Here is the drive on the left side coming off instead. That was Harris, shot for three, no good. Tigers need every rebound they can get here and they got that one. Here's Deaton right side, thought about the shot. I don't know what kind of shot she's gonna be able to take with the hurt arm and I don't know how serious it is. Evidently not broken or anything because she's in the game. Elliott backs down. Looks for help on top. That'll be Holmberg. 12 to shoot. Right side they come. Shot from 13. Ah, good! Liz Elliott puts it up from 13 feet right side. 59 for the Aggies. 55 for Pacific. Tigers looking for their third straight win and fifth of the year. They had six against 23 losses in 2021-22 with one of the youngest teams in the country. Ball goes out of bounds. Off the body of a Tiger and Cal or UC Davis. I have been warned by several folks, among them broadcasters, co-workers, et cetera, don't call them Cal Davis, they are UC Davis. All righty, ball on top, Sussman is there. Bring it to the top of the circle. Turner looks left, looks right. Ashby on her top cheek to cheek, sweatshirt to sweater on the defense. Here's the long shot, it is no good. Shot clock violation gives the ball back to the Tigers. She had to try the three-pointer, tried it from about 24 feet. It went 22. Rebound to Pacific. Tigers with the ball, down the fly, down four. Can cut it to two, can cut it to one. You remember the gamey comeback they had against Rice, only to fall to the Owls by 10 a week or so ago. Smith the shot, no good, foul. That's good if it goes, but Smith hit the dirt. Foul is going to go on Harris. And that from Mozzie, her first personal foul. That's the first team foul of the quarter for UC Davis. Go-Go at the free throw line. Liz has had just a dandy day and really a dandy Thanksgiving turkey tip-off, or Tiger turkey tip-off. First is good. Take them any way you can get them right here. 59-56. Davis trying to salvage one win in the Tiger Turkey tip-off. And Pacific looking to get two wins and sweep their effort. Had the big 14-point win over Wyoming on Friday afternoon here at the Spano Center. Ball to the top left side. It's Sussman rolling around to the right. Yvonne Turner there, shot three, good. Not going to help you if you're not going to get a body in Mozzie Harris and Mazatlan. Roll to the right, aim in corner. Shot was up, shot was good. Back to five at 62 to 57. Go, go thinking three to Holmberg. Down low they come. It's going to be Elliott. Liz's shot up and good. No foul, though the bodies were bumped pretty severely. Megan Jones saying, I'm all right, but uh, wouldn't have minded a foul call there. It didn't happen, no block. And they were, of course, in the... Uh, the circle where you're not going to call a charge. Ball, right side, shot, three, no good foul. Smith hits the dirt once again. We come the other way, and the foul is going to go on Yvonne Turner. 7-25, fourth period. Aggies 62, Tigers 59. C.C. Holmberg, the Swedish product to the Dallas Texan, the IMG Academy player. Spent her high school days at Bradenton, Florida. That's Liz Smith. Holmberg backs down to the down low in the driveway. Rolls no good. Puts it up just a little bit too soft and no good. We've a whistle. We've a foul. That'll go on the Tigers and Holmberg. Holmberg tied up with the body of the Aggie player. Right, here comes UC Davis. Aggies. Across the floor, all to the top of the circle. Sydney Burns has it, number 13 for UC Davis. It was Turner for a second. They get it off on top, high post Megan Jones. Right side, three ball, way high. And the rebound is going to come to Davis. No, it's not offensive foul. They got the rebound. Megan Jones had control of the ball, 
but the foul is called and we come the other way. Tigers are getting their opportunities. Points in the paint, not kind to Pacific this afternoon. And I know I've said that several times, but if the Tigers end up not winning here, that is gonna be one of the bigger stories. Holmberg, right side, Deaton line extended. Daylight Katie spinning around the circle from the right side to the left side. Holmberg, three ball, fire in the hole! Tie ball game of 62-62, 6.27 left, and a timeout is called by Coach Bradley Davis. Oh, Margaret, look at this one, will you? UC Davis, 62, Pacific, 62. And what a dandy fourth period this has been for the Tigers. Want to follow along with other Pacific sports? It's an easy thing to do. Download the Pacific Tigers app to be able to follow all your Pacific Athletics on the go. The Pacific Athletics app is three through the App Store and available on iPhone and Android devices. And you can follow along just like I do on your smartphone. Tigers men water polo team. G. CC champions after defeating Long Beach State and that put the Tigers into the NCAA tournament to support Water Polo U University hosting a watch party event on campus at the DeRosa Center the opening round match happening next Thursday and it'll be December 1st and that will be at 3 o'clock at this point 627 of the fourth we're tied at 62 the shooting for Pacific has improved a little, not a lot, a little, 20 of 52, 38 and a half percent. They've tried 19 three-pointers and have made nine. That's 64 percent. You can uh, thank Liz Smith for a lot of that. And at the free throw line, they've tried 16 at the line and made 13. The big story for Davis, they've only had seven foul shots. They've made five of those. Aggies for the game, 23 of 53 from the field, 11 of 29 from three-point territory. 14 points for Turner, 15 leading the way is Mazatlan Harris. And, of course, Liz Smith with 28 points and another fantastic game. I would think some, some mentions at least for West Coast Conference Player of the Week honor should go toward Gogo. Whistle, foul, offensive foul, and the charge is going on UC Davis. And we come the other way as Ashby hits the deck. She's up. She's fine. And the foul is going to be the fourth of the period. And the Tigers have just committed one. Go-go right side, aim in corner. She'll stop and fire the three that's at the front of the rim. Looks soft for the second and left her hand. Ball goes out. Aggies get it. That's normally a really good shot for Smith. And, you know, you're not going to hit 100% of your your, uh, three-point shots. Nobody does that. Smith has just had a real fine day anyway. She's just missed two in her last couple of games. Wide open, three ball, back of the iron and no good. As the Aggies miss it, we have a whistle, we come the other way, as Pacific will get the basketball back. Harris tried the three, missed it, ball went out, and you'll give it back to Pacific. Take the lead with a score here. Tied up at 62, five and 32 to go. Daylight, Katie, right hand dribble. Ashby lost it, got it back. Nice job of the save as it popped off her shoulder. She'll go to Elliott up high. Down low they come. KDD with a shot. Bradley Davis wanted the foul. Probably should have been called. It didn't happen. And the ball is going back to the Aggies. Burns top left side. Deep picks her up on the defense. Shaking off the foul that wasn't. And the miss that was. Here's Burns left side. Driving on Deaton. Stripped away by Katie Deaton. And the ball coming down to the Tigers. Ashby won the beat. Shots up. And it's missed, but a foul. And Sling and Sam will go to the free throw line to try to get the Tigers the lead back. And the timeout is called. 4.57 to play, tied at 62. Tigers were down six points at the start of this period and have been down in double digits a couple of times. Back after this on the WCC Network.
Hi, I'm Calvin Boasting. I'm a junior pre-farm student. This is the Don and Karen Dorosa University Center, and it's where we all come to hang out. So let's go and check it out. So this is a dining hall. It's the main place to get food on campus. This is the marketplace where they serve a wide variety of food. My personal favorites are the burritos and sandwiches. Upstairs is the lair, another place to get food, and it's open late at night. You can play pool here, and there's live entertainment at the Brickyard stage. If you're looking for something to do on the weekends, there's always something happening at the lair. Less than five to go in regulation time. It's UC Davis 62, Pacific 62. Tigers have scratched and clawed their way back to a 62-62 tie. It was 59 to 53 going into the beginning seconds of the fourth period. Inside shooting has not been particularly kind. Free throws and three point shots have served the Tigers well here. Ashby at the foul line. The 5'9 senior from Perth, Australia, 93% free throw shooter. She gets the first, it's good. She gets another in Pacific. For its trouble, gets the lead back, 63-62. Tiger women home to Nevada, Las Vegas. The Rebels on Saturday at two o'clock. UOP men taking on Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. That'll be tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Zach Bayrudy give you a great picture of the game from the very seat that I'm in right now. 64-62 as Ashby hit both of the free throws. Aggies basketball. Here's Burns in a crowd. Lost it. And the ball goes into the hands of Holmberg of the steal. Davis commits the turnover, and here come the Tigers. Down low, Elliott works with the shot. It's slotted away, and it goes out of bounds, and Pacific should keep it. They will. Elliott put up the shot against the 6'3 junior, Megan Jones. And it was slotted out of bounds by the Aggies. Right side, Smith thought about the three. Down low, they come instead. Ball is knocked loose. It is swatted out of bounds, and the Tigers are going to keep it again. Looked like Sussman who knocked the ball out. Gogo -Go will do the inbound. They get it off. They wanted to get it off for Holmberg. She wasn't ready for the pass, not expecting it at least. And here come the Aggies, other end. Shot off the back of the iron, no good. Uncontested, Megan Jones skies for the rebound. UCD with the basketball, 13, 12 to shoot, 402 to play, Pacific by two at 64, 62. Burns quickly moving to the right side. They've got five, they've got four, shot for three, uh-uh. And the rebound is going to Davis. Aggies get the board. Here's another shot from Amen Corner, right side, it's good. Three pointers up and down. That was Sussman who tried it from the right side, it was good. 65-64, Davis regains the lead. Elliott for Smith, go, go, 13, back of the rim. Uh-uh, rebound into the hands of UC Davis, three and 25 to go. Bradley Davis calls the new defensive alignment. Trying to stretch out the Aggies who are very good outside shooters, at least today. Shot is up, no good, but a foul. And two foul shots going to the Aggies as the foul on the block. I think that's going on Elliott, and that would be her second. Schweitzer will come into the game replacing Liz Elliott. She said some good minutes here. And at the free throw line, 100% free throw shooter, Mazatlan Harris. They call her Mozzie for short. First is no good. Angies did a really neat thing around Thanksgiving. Second free throw is good. It's 66-64 now. Davis with the lead. 
over Thanksgiving, each player had to say what they were thankful for, but they were given the name of another player, and why were you thankful, or why are you thankful for that person? Kind of a cool thing to do. Tigers miss on their end. We come the other way to the Aggies, up by two. Elliott will come in and spell Schweitzer as soon as the ball's dead. Ball to the right side. Harris is there, one-hander, no good. Rebound, Aggies. They're going to take it back. Burns will go on top. There's Turner. Turner switched the hands on the dribble. He'll slow it down and set it up here. Holmberg is going to come in at the next opportunity as well. Pinballed around. Bump of the body is over on the right wing. Here is four. Three to shoot. Ball rejected. Ashry coming up with the steal. The shot just at the, as the shot clock was going off, it was up and in. Shot three ball. Hitting the floor and hard was Smith. She missed the foul shot. Five-point lead for the Yankees, 69-64. Be a hard one for the Tigers to lose if they do not come back, and they've come back several times in this one. This would be a very tough defeat to swallow. You point to the inside shooting and the fact that it just wasn't really there. They've had high percentage shots and good shots. Shots coach wants to see you take, but a lot of them just haven't fallen. And the uh, points in the paint category. Two minutes to go. Fourth period, 68-64 Davis. Four-point lead. It will not go to seven as the shot was missed by Jones. Here come the Tigers. 68-64 Aggies. Ashby shot up. No good. Ashby fights for the rebound. She had it. Then tried to get it to Elliott, who was falling down at the time. And the Aggies will take it back. They'll try to pad their four-point lead. Time a-wasting for the home team here with a minute and a half to go. 68 for UC Davis, 64 for Pacific. Ball top right side. Right hand, or er, left hand dribble and a foul. That goes on Elliott. And number 14 picks up foul number three. No move toward the bench for Bradley Davis with a minute 25 to go. Tigers with a couple of fouls to give here as the foul's away from the basketball. They just regroup with the fresh 20 seconds. Burns on top. This is Jones. Megan against Elliott. Top right side. Burns once again. They've got nine to get a shot off. They head to the right side. Bodies all over the place. And an offensive foul is called on the Aggies. Minute 10 to go. No shots on the offensive foul. Tigers will regroup and try to cut the deficit. A minute and five to go. Aggies lead the Tigers by four. Smith, down low they come. Elliott lost it. Burns will take it. Davis comes the other way. Another shot. Make it a, uh, well, a true two-possession game just to tie it. And then you have to hit two three-pointers. Turner rolls right, rolls left. Smith on her. Like glue on the defense. Rolling toward the right side is uh, not Smith, but Turner. And we come the other way, and Davis calls a timeout. 68-64. Aggies lead the Tigers. 43 seconds to go. Four points to tie, five to take the lead. Hopefully I can get a couple of the other West Coast Conference scores for you here this afternoon. This is the only women's game going on involving a West Coast Conference school. Try to get you some of the men's scores. Michigan State and Portland are in action. Uh, don't have that score just yet, unless with a refresh. And still don't have it. Xavier and Gonzaga started at 4.30. Then tomorrow night, Maine and Gonzaga doing action in women's basketball. Tiger men will be playing Cal Poly. Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo mainly, and that'll be here at seven o'clock. One of the last tools in the toolbox, the last second fouls, and there's one for the Pacific Tigers. Again, one more foul to give before UC Davis goes to the line. Bouncer, right side. Ball is <laughs> taken over, and finally, Elliott 
who was trying to get the ball away from Sussman just kind of slipped on her. That'll be the Okay, there, there's the foul. Finally, they call the foul. And a timeout is called by the Aggies. They'll talk things over with Jennifer Gross. And Bradley Davis visits with the UOP squad. Associate head coach Amy Starr discussing the strategy with the Tiger team. It can be done. A shot, a steal, and a shot, but you got to hit these. You're down four points. That's a two-possession game. You can get a two and a three and have the one-point lead. You can get two twos, tie it up. Three-point play would cut it to one. A lot of scenarios here, but you need the basketball to make any of those work. 39.4 ticks to go. UC Davis with the basketball. And uh, with the ball was Burns, Sidney Burns, the 5'9 sophomore from Wilsonville, Oregon. The foul on the push on Ashby. And now the Yankees will go to the line for the uh, remainder, at least of regulation, and overtime as well, I guess, since that would uh, carry over. Free throw line, 56% foul shooter. Sidney Burns hit the first. It's five points now. It's 69-64. Second one's on the way. It's up. It's good. Timeout called by Bradley Davis. And he'll talk things over with the Tigers, who are down six. It's 70-64. to 64. Tigers with a two-point lead in this one. About halfway through the quarter, they battle back to a six-point deficit. They got a big three-point shot from Smith at the end of the third. And then the Aggies able to come back and increase the uh, advantage a little bit before the Tigers got on a run and took over the lead. But it's been all Aggies beyond that point. 36.4 seconds, UC Davis 70, Pacific 64. The timeout is ended. Teams are on the floor, and the Tigers have the ball. Smith, right side, Holmberg holding it high and dry, comes top of the circle, Deaton. Daylight Katie on the drive on the shot. She got it, 70 to 66, and here come the Tigers with the quick foul. Burns with a 56% free throw shooting average. There are higher percentages certainly in Division I, but Burns is the one getting fouled right now. She made a couple just a uh, couple of minutes ago. Pacific should have two more points on the board. Now they get it, 70 to 66. Head the other way, first free throw, no good. Second free throw, hit that one. 71-66, need a three and a two to take the lead. Now nope, three and a two would just tie it, wouldn't it, Gary? And I was just complimenting myself on my math skills, which is always a silly thing for me to do, but they'll need two threes to take the lead with 28 seconds to do it. It can be done, talking it over with Coach Starr and Coach Bradley Davis will be with me on a quick post-game report here. My thanks to Janet Lucas, the athletic director at the University of the Pacific. We had a really nice visit on some of the things going on at Pacific. And it is a great atmosphere here. If you want to come to a game, I certainly recommend you do so. Of course, this streams around the world. If you're you know, somewhere in Switzerland or Great Britain or one of those countries on the other side of the planet, well... Might need to save your pennies to come out here, but we'd love to have you for a game. You ever make it to the other side of the world? Come say hi to me, and maybe we can talk at halftime. 71-66. Tigers really need to get some good shots, and they need to fall. And I'm being Captain Obvious a little bit on that, but that's what we're staring at. Smith with Ashby. 
Elliott, Deaton, and Holmberg. For the Aggies, it's Sussman, Harris, also Turner, And Megan Jones, know there needs to be one more out there and get you that in a bit. Here's Elliott's shot, up good. 71-68 now, 19 and a half seconds and there's another foul for Smith. She is bringing the Aggies to the line. That'll be Tess Sussman. The uh, last Aggie I needed to give you, I gave you four. There are five on the floor obviously and that's Burns. At the free throw line, Sussman, 60% foul shooter. Graduate of Harvard, came from Needham, Massachusetts, N-E-E-D-H-A-M, pronounced Needham. A friend of mine who grew up in Boston said, you know, I was looking for a pronouncer, it could be Needham, could be Needham. She said, well, just think of it this way. You've got something and I need them. Second free throw shot is missed, 72, 68, 17, 16 seconds to go. Smith with a red hot hand and 28 points today. Stripped the basketball away, did the Aggies. And Megan Jones comes up with the steal. And going back to the free throw line is going to be Sydney Burns as she's fouled by Ashby. You see at the uh, top of the monitor, they're rather dire circumstance for Pacific. Down four, 7.9 ticks left. Tigers trying to hang on and continue on a two-game winning streak. Last week, they defeated the Academy of Art University 90-26 to and then beat Wyoming on Friday by 14. Both free throws good. Six seconds, five seconds. Here is Smith. Lost it, got it back. Off balance shot at the buzzer. No good. And the Tigers will have their two-game winning streak snapped here this afternoon at the Spano Center as Pacific Falls to UC Davis, 74-68 the final score. As the Tigers go to four and three, and UC Davis evening its record at three and three. Big story, inside shooting that uh, did not go the greatest for the Tigers here in tonight's game. 74-68 will have the head coach Bradley Davis joining me in just a, a minute or so here and we'll get the uh, final statistics. Tigers shooting 36.1% from the field for the ball game. Not a good number of points in the paint. Well, it's better than it was as they had 16, but on second chance points and fast breaks, didn't go well at all. And uh, Bradley Davis joining me on tonight's post game report. Coach, uh, when you look at this one, a lot of high percentage shots down low for the Tigers. Had the opportunities, but uh, just wouldn't drop a lot of times tonight. Uh, yeah, we had some opportunities that just didn't drop, and we had some, you know, they can get going from three. They, they shoot the ball really, really well. Uh, they didn't shoot the ball well yesterday uh, against, uh, against Wyoming, and we knew that, that they would be a little bit different today. So um, we had to make sure we contested way out. Uh, there were a couple that we let go. Uh, but at the same time, we had some opportunities we just missed. And uh, you take a look at the, uh, the the game stats. Once again, three-point shooting, outstanding. Smith had a lot to do with that as you go 9 of 16 and then 15 of 18 to the free throw line. So some aspects of the game were pretty good for you tonight. No, there were some, some positive things, and it was just one of those games that was back and forth, and, and when we needed a shot, we just didn't get it. And, uh, you know, that's the way basketball goes sometimes. Um, Smith, what a line here today, 8 of 14 shooting. Three or six of nine from three points, and then perfect at the line for uh, 28 points. And uh, she had 19 in the first half for you, so she has just had an incredible string of games for you. Yeah, she has. She's played well, and we've needed it with an eye out and uh, CC out for our game there. We've needed people to step up, and, and Liz did that really well. Um, you know, you, there's a lot to probably talk about, but that's that that kind of stands out is that rebounding stat. You know, they've just absolutely buried us on the boards. And uh, they have got some pretty decent athletes as well. You look at number two, Jones, who uh, had some really good rebounds. And they're outside shooting pretty good, too, with a, a couple of their uh, players from Davis. And they, they seem to, at least on a few occasions, have an easy time just stopping and popping the shot. 
No, they're, they're a tough team to prepare for in one day, and you know that. Uh, we try to do a little bit for them on Tuesday as well, uh, knowing you know what they run is, is, is a challenge, and they, they do a good job of it when they're hitting threes especially, uh, and tonight they were hitting. Okay, bit of a slowdown this week. UNLV coming up on Saturday, another tough test for your ladies. Yeah, you know, a postseason team uh, from last year, and it's been a dogfight each game uh, the past two years. We played them, I think it was overtime, two years ago and a uh, one point loss last overtime win for us by one and then a one point loss last year so uh, hopefully we can make this one another dog fight yeah I, I do want to say this not an ounce of quitting your ladies I mean some shots didn't fall and that's going to happen some days you're, you're, you're going to have days like that but uh, for 40 minutes I mean they came back in this one down six to start the period took the lead but uh, you know they they never gave it up no uh, no we've got a different it's a different squad it's a different feeling uh, we feel like we can win every single game that we're in, and uh, I, you know, I like the fight in this team, and I like the preseason that we have. I think it's going to shape up well uh, for us going into conference. Okay, let's uh, let you recover for uh, tonight. A couple of days. We'll see you on Saturday. All right, sounds good. Coach Bradley Davis on our post-game report tonight. The final once again, 74-68, as UC Davis holding. The Tigers at arm's length, stiff arming the Death Angel, and coming up with a 16 point or six point decision. I'm not going to make that any worse than it was, certainly. The uh, Tigers go to 4-3 and three on the season, and UC Davis improves to 3-3 three and three after the loss uh, against Wyoming here at the Spano Center yesterday. We'll take a break, come back, and rock the document for the uh, second half of the final game statistics. Tell you a little bit of what's going on here at UOP this week as well. You watch this for a bit. We'll come back, wrap things up from the Spano Center on the WCC Network. Hi, I'm Calvin Boateng. I'm a junior pre-pharmacy student, and welcome to the William Knox Holt Memorial Library. Let's take a look around. The library has undergone a major renovation, and now we have this bright, modern study space. On the first floor, there are a variety of study areas, rooms for groups, and pods for privacy. The first floor includes the Innovation Commons. This is where students have the opportunity to explore, experiment, and show what they've learned using state-of-the-art technology. This is the Cube. It's a room to experiment with 3D printing, large-scale printing, and virtual reality production. During the renovation, one of the new features that my friends and I were most looking forward to was the Starbucks. It's part of the library's transformation into a place where people can meet and collaborate. On the second floor, you can find academic services such as the Writing Center and Math and Science Tutoring. On the third floor, there is a meditation and prayer area for students of all faith. Just about time to go home from the Spano Center on this Sunday afternoon. UC Davis hanging on and defeating Pacific 74-68, the final score here from the UOP campus. Let's take a look at the uh, total statistics for the game. Tiger shoot 5 of 14 for the fourth period. For the game, 22 of 61 for 36%. At the three-point range, 9 of 16, another good number for the Tigers, and again, Go-Go with a great night from beyond the arc as uh, they shoot 56%. That is just a dandy number from three-point range. And when your inside game isn't working all that well, as that di ha did happen at times for Pacific today, then uh, you like having the outside shooting work for you, and it did. Nine of 16 from three-point territory at the free throw line, 15 of 18 for 83%. The leading scorer, Liz Smith, 8 of 14 from the field, perfect from the line, 6 of 9 beyond the arc, and 28 points, only double-figure scorer in the game for UOP today. Elizabeth Elliott coming up with 11 points, 8 for Sam Ashby, Erica Adams with 6. Uh, there were um, uh, 9 points for Katie Deaton. Let's not forget the Wisconsin product. Uh, 6 points again, Adams. Then uh, 3 for Rosie Schweitzer. Uh, Holmberg with three, then Schweitzer with two, and uh, one point for Madeline Annis. As far as the Aggies go, 
They shoot 25 of 61 shots. So both teams with 61 shots. It's just that the um, Aggies made three more and come up with a six-point win here. The uh, 25 of 61 tally, 41%, three-point range, 34 three-point shots tried, and they made 12. 35-3, that, that's not a horrible number from three-point territory. And 12 of 17 at the line. A lot of those coming up late when the Tigers basically had the uh, final tool in the toolbox was to uh, try to commit the fouls and get the ball back. And uh, 12 of 17, again, for the Aggies for 70.6%. They had four players in double figures. Great balance for the Aggies this afternoon. They had Sydney Burns with 16 points, Mazatlan Harris with 16. She really blossomed in half number two here. Yvonne Turner, good three-point threat, 14 points. She was four of 10 for three-point shooting, five of 16 from the field, and again, 14 points. Uh, 11 in the contest for Tess Sussman, eight points for Naya Epps off the bench, uh, four points in the game, Megan Norris, three for Victoria Baker, and two points for Megan Jones, who really showed her medal in other ways with some good blocks and some good steals, especially very late in the ball game. So the Tigers go to uh, four and three on the season. Two more wins. They match their win total from a year ago when they finished six and 23, and you have to figure that uh, those two wins are going to come because this is a much improved squad over last year. UC Davis, the five consecutive champions championship winners of the Big West Conference going to 3-3 uh, three and three on the season. And uh, so a busy week continues for Pacific. The women off until Saturday when the Battle of Las Vegas is in to uh, meet the Tigers. Rebels and the Tigers up at 2 o'clock on Saturday. Tomorrow night, men's play as the uh, Pacific men are in action against Cal Poly San Luis Obispo at 7 o'clock. Zach Bayrudi will bring it to you on Fox Sports AM 1280 and right here at WCCSports.com. And, of course, the men's water polo team in the NCAA championships, their first effort on Thursday, and that will be a 3 o'clock start against um, UC Davis. That's going on on the UC Berkeley campus. And, again, the uh, Tigers, one of seven teams qualifying for the NCAA championship. You can go to PacificTigers.com. And get the ticket information. I don't know what the situation is other than the championship, which sold out in 30 minutes when the tickets went on sale. There might still be some tickets in Berkeley available for the um, water polo match involving Pacific on Thursday. But there is a watch party going on here at Pacific, and you can get those details at uh, PacificTigers.com. It is 4.55 Pacific Standard Time. Show's over. Say goodbye. Final score, UC Davis 74, Pacific 68. The next action for the women on the WCC Sports Network this uh, Saturday as they wrap up the five-game homestand. The Battle Las Vegas is coming in for a 2 o'clock start, just a little before 2 o'clock for our pregame show here at the Spano Center. And if you can't be there, be here on the friendly confines of the WCC Sports Network. Tough game, tough effort for the Tigers, just falling short by six to the UC Davis Aggies. For everyone connected with the uh, University of the Pacific, our thanks uh, certainly to Michael January, who's uh, running things here in the uh, back room for us, and our thanks to Janet Lucas, the AD at Pacific, for visiting with me at our halftime. Do have a good night. Do have a good week. For everybody connected with the University of the Pacific, I'm Gary Ellenbolt. Good night from the Spano Center, everyone. You've been watching a presentation of the University of the Pacific and the West Coast Conference Network.